as a leader, do you practice lean? If you are in a manufacturing industry and produce real stuff, you practice it, or at least you wish you would. But if you operate in a service or transactional industry, do you even know what lean is? And it does matter if you want superior results and engage people at work. Hello, this is Pierre Bienvenue from IMPI. We are here to help remove anxiety from leadership as they gain greater clarity and control. Within Walking Distance is a series giving tips, tools and reflections for leadership. If you are new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the links relevant to this video that you will find in the description box below. MP. So, let's answer the question. What is lean? Otherwise known as lean manufacturing and more recently, lean management. In this video, I want to provide one definition of the term, its origin, and focus on several principles to lean management. To keep you interested in this short video, I won't discuss the method or the tools. There are several definitions to lean. Here is one sentence one. Lean is both a way of thinking and a practice that aims at delivering exact value to the customer by continually engaging people to improve quality, delivery, and cost. The term lean was coined in 1988 by John Krasik in this article, Triumph of the Lean Production System, and defined in 1996 by James Womack and Daniel Jones in their book, Lean Thinking. It replaced the term just in time in the 90s. I would like to give credit to Professor Norman Full, founder of the Lean Institute Africa, for enlightening us with the three principles I introduce here. Look, what is this man doing? Thinking. Lean creates a thinking people. But now, by making them solving their own problems and making decisions. The principle here is to utilize the knowledge, experience, and creativity of people that work the process all the time to improve it. There is more power to harness the mind of all employees than in that of the managers or the improvement specialists. Ask people to make their processes simpler, better, faster, and cheaper by experimenting and learning. That's respect in action. You can imagine that behind that sort of people engagement, there is a strong and relentless leadership commitment and a system of continuous improvement. What is this? A bin. Well done, discerning viewer. A bin is a repository for waste. Waste are these activities that eat up time and your customer is not willing to pay for. So we want to choose what to improve in order to eliminate wasteful activities from our processes. We're going to take a closer look at the seven deadly wastes in another video. But let me give you real life examples of wasteful activities that may sound familiar to you as a leader. In a previous career, I attended the Tuesday coffee meeting, a weekly senior management meeting. Every time the CEO was coming back from one of his business trip to the Far East, we would be treated to an epic narration. This was entertaining. He was a good storyteller. That took a good chunk of the morning. During that time, for lack of time, operational decisions were delayed and had to be addressed in an ad hoc format later during the week. This is the waste of overprocessing. Another example of overprocessing, you request one of your associates a particular study to make a business decision. She spends several work days on it and delivers to you the report. But after postponing for weeks, pressed by the events, you've already made an urgent decision. So you've paid your employee to do a job that is wasted. She speed off too, and you might not 
have made the right call. Another classic, you try to organize meetings with a prospective client. They don't come back to you or they communicate poorly and you wait for days for a vague response. You have to spend time searching for information, searching for the truth, and that's the waste of motion. You get it? So, wasteful activities don't just happen at operational levels, but also at all levels of management. They are time to decision making and eat up expensive management time. Next principle. Is there a problem in this scene? We actually don't know. We don't have a standard. So we don't know what is normal or abnormal. Is the problem with the one meerkat standing? The cat hiding? Or the one meerkat looking at you, unlike the other animals? Now, once we have a standard, the lean principle is that we want to know what is normal from what is abnormal right now and we want to respond to it right now. A lean company eliminates fluctuations in its processes, becomes more and more agile and responsive to customer demands and external constraints. So the principles of, and methods of lean manufacturing are relevant to any organization that have customers and need to satisfy them by delivering a product, service, or transaction. Not only does this apply to automotive, automotive assembly plants or packaging companies, but also to call centers, marketing agencies, hospitals, banks, NFT exchange platforms, governmental institutions, and fishing operations. So let's wrap up. These three principles of Lean are create a thinking people, eliminate wasteful activities, establish standards and respond immediately to abnormal situations. And this is the good quote for this episode. Jim Womack and Daniel Jones, in their book, Lean Thinking, wrote, Lean is a way to do more and more with less, while giving the end customers exactly what they want. Isn't this beautiful? If you are one of the first three people able to identify the location of this view, you can meet with me for a free hour of leadership coaching. Just write the location in the comment section and send me an email at wwd at Also, you may have a need to improve on your leadership skills, turn them into good habits, or you need support to transform your organization. I can help you. Feel free to connect. I'll be posting the next episode in two weeks. In the meantime, lead well. <laughs>